Hi, my name is Josh with PBT. Today I'm going to show you how to connect to a site controller, also known as ESC3, and set a static IP address. This process involves installing a driver which requires administrative rights to the computer. You will need to first connect to the site controller using a USB A to B cable. Once you have connected to the site controller, ensure the unit is powered on. You will notice that Windows may try to automatically locate and install a suitable driver. Since this is a proprietary device, you will need to manually install the driver. First, locate the driver on the flash drive that is plugged into the front of the site controller. Remove the flash drive from the site controller and insert it into your PC. You will find that the driver is located in the Manuals, USB Driver, and Utilities folder. The file you need is labeled mchpcdc.inf. Go to Device Manager on your computer. You will notice a new device labeled CDC-RS-232 Emulation Demo under Other Devices. This is the device we need to update the driver for. Right-click on this device and go to Properties. Click on the Driver tab at the top. Click on Update Driver. Then navigate to the driver on the flash drive you just plugged in. Follow the prompts on the screen to complete the installation process. After you've completed this step, remove the flash drive from your computer and insert it back into the site controller. After closing out of the dialog boxes, you will notice that the device labeled CDCRS232 emulation demo is gone, and a new device labeled USB serial device with COM number after it has appeared. Take note of the COM number here since this designates the specific USB port you've connected to with the site controller. We will use this number in the next step. If you plug the device into a different USB port in the future, Return to the Device Manager to see what the updated COM port number is, as each USB port will have a different number. For this video, we will be using a free piece of software called PuTTY. Open PuTTY to begin the serial connection process. Under Connection Type, choose Serial and replace the COM number in the line above to whichever number we found in Device Manager. You may want to save this session and label it so that it reflects which USB port you are connected to for easier connections in the future. For instance, if you have two ports on the right side of your laptop, you may want to label the session as right side front or rear USB, or whatever works best for you. Click open to proceed. You will immediately be shown a blank screen. From here, you will need to press and hold down the X key on your keyboard. This reboots the site controller so that you can access it via serial connection. While you are holding down the X key, you should see the LED next to the USB input on the site controller blinking. This blinking indicates that the site controller acknowledges that you are holding down the X key. If you do not see this LED blinking, you may want to repeat this process. You can always contact PBT for additional support. You will be prompted to press enter when the device is ready to enter setup mode. If you miss this prompt, continue holding X down until this message repeats. A list of options appear. For this video, we are only concerned with option 0, server setup. Press 0 and then press enter. Enter the new IP address you would like to use for the device. We will be inserting the current IP address of the device for this demonstration. As you type in the IP address, you will notice that the current information is displayed in parentheses. Press enter when you have finished inputting the new IP address. If you would like to change the gateway IP address, this is where you would do so. Press Y on the keyboard to change the gateway IP address. Again, type in the new IP address you would like to use. We will once again be using the existing gateway IP address for this demonstration. The next prompt is for the subnet mask. The SC3 uses a byte instead of the full subnet mask you are probably used to seeing. To find the corresponding byte for your subnet mask, refer to the SC3 manual. Input this byte into the prompt and press enter. The last option you will be prompted with is to change the Telnet configuration password. If you'd like to add a Telnet password or change the current Telnet password, you can do that by pressing Y and inputting it on the next screen. For this demonstration, we will not be making any changes to the Telnet password. You will be returned to the main menu. From here, use option 9 to save changes and reset. This will reboot the site controller and make the IP address changes you just made active. This has been a PBT instructional video. Don't forget to click the follow button below the video to be notified when a new video is posted. On behalf of all of us here at PBT, thanks for watching.